morning, everybody. Good morning. It seems like I've been here for almost two hours now, but I guess that's good. <laughs> Goes with life. Uh, it, it's a real joy to be here this morning, and for the nine of us that are here, uh, I do appreciate that. I appreciate your being here and your commitment and your dedication and so forth. Uh, one of our members told me something this morning, and I went to look at what she was talking about, just a little bit more careful. That Anne told me to look at her earrings, that they were made out of paper, mm -hmm. and they were made in the from Japan. And <laughs> she said that they're ugly. <laughs> Uh, you know, but I, I warned her that I said, if they're from Japan, they might make her eyes slant. That's, uh, that's, uh, and from here, they look nice. It's too bad. I don't want them. I don't wear earrings. <laughs> but uh, glad that you're all here this morning. Uh, there is a passage of scripture in the book of Philippians. I'm going to be referring to that all during my message this morning. Bitch, I, I don't know how you feel. But I'm getting to, I told Steve the other night, uh, I can't remember which night it was, but it's getting to the point where I don't like to listen to the news on television anymore. I, I don't know if anything that tears me down and makes me so depressed is to hear what they're doing on the news. And the question that comes to me over and over and over again is what in the world is happening to our world? Uh, have you ever seen such negative thoughts? And the question comes to my mind, is it because news travels faster today than it did when I was a kid? Or is it the fact that our news media is picking up the negative things and building upon them and won't let them go. And actually feeding the negative appetite of those people that are going out committing crimes. Or is it the fact that things are just getting worse and worse and worse? And biblical predictions and prophecies are fastly fulfilling in our life. I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know. I, I don't know, but I firmly believe, and I, I want to make a comment here, and I, I, I a little bit of a plug for what we're doing at 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings. I firmly believe that one of the problems lies in the fact that we're teaching our kids they're nothing but animals, and they go out and work, act like animals. When we teach evolution in school, you're not made of God, you're not made in the image of God, that you just raised up out of a amoeba or a wolf or a bear or something like that, and that uh, it's a survival of the fittest. I think all we're doing is what the appetite for them to do whatever they want, as they want, and I think that's what's going on. But hey, let's just for a moment think. Have you ever seen so many hurricanes? Getting our land at one time. What about the the uh, earthquakes that we're seeing right now? Uh, every time you pick up a paper, it seems like there's an earthquake. In it. Uh, what about the idea that said, what happened in uh, Las Vegas? And I, I'm going to say something. I, I thought this, and Steve said something to me about it the, uh, the other day. Isn't it a paradox for us to be asking to pray for Sin City? <laughs> and Las Vegas is known as Sin City. And, I, and you see the signs out in a lot of the bulletin boards of, in Las Vegas. Pray for Las Vegas. I prayed for Las Vegas for a long time that they get rid of the sin of the there. I know there's a family a gathering that's up, but certainly the family had a good time there. And not uh, the sin that goes on as it put there. What about the opium epidemic that we're dealing with in our land, in our city, in our area? 
I almost put a young man on the prayer list. You have to understand my family a little bit. That my daughter who lives in Indiana was married to a preacher. If that's what you want to call him. He had problems with uh, morality, with alcohol, and some other problems. And uh, he and my daughter got divorced as a result. He married another woman, had two children by that other woman. He's married twice since then. And the son that he had when, uh, when uh, he uh, uh, married this woman after my daughter, has been put in jail because of drug paraphernalia, because of drug trafficking, and so on. I almost put them on the prayer list. But you begin to look at what's going on. You hear of wars and rumors of wars. You, you hear, see what's happening in Las Vegas. Man, man I tell you, what's happening? And where, as Christians, do we find our sanctuary? Where do we find our peace? Where do we find our contentment? I'm going to read a passage of Scripture. I want you to hear what Paul says. And I'm going to share this with you. The idea that every time I have problems and feel despair in my life and I feel very much un uneasy about what's going on. I read the book of Philippians. And I'm going to be reading from the fourth chapter beginning with the sixth verse and going on through the thirteenth verse. And I want you to hear very carefully what is being said here. Paul writes, and by the way, he's, the Philippians was written while Paul was in prison. He was in Rome, in prison. He was waiting his sentence. He did not realize at the time he wrote this letter that it was going to be released. But he was released for a while and he was put back in the dungeon. And Paul writes this, be careful for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the great God of peace shall be with you. Jumping down now to the 11th verse. Now I speak, not, I, but not that I speak in respect of what. For I have learned in what sort of state I am, therewith to be content. I know how to be abased, I know how to abound. Everywhere in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. And then that famous verse, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthened me. Now the question has always been on my mind, whether these things that strengthens him, is it Christ that strengthens him or the things that he does that strengthen him? I don't know. But I want you to think just for a moment. In the book of Philippians, the very first chapter, talks about, about Paul's afflictions. What he suffered. He even makes a statement that says, for me to live is, is Christ, but to die is my gain. The second chapter deals with humility. Paul, our humility one towards another. Uh, Christ's example of humility and so forth. The third chapter deals with warnings against the confidence in the flesh. And the last chapter is Paul's exhortation for peace. The peace that passes all understanding. 
Three things to gain peace, the peace of God. Three things. First, we must have a right relationship with God. Think that just from there. A right relationship with God. I, I look at our uh, the ones that are here this morning, and I, I, I hope and pray that you have that peace. I, I can remember my, my wife when she was there, when something happened negative in our family. And I don't know how many times she would take me aside and say, I feel, you know God's never let us down. Things will work out for His glory. And the future is going to be held, held in His hands. How many times she was right. But what is that about this right relationship with God? In Romans, the fifth chapter, the very first verse. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Christ Jesus Christ. Faith is manifest in obedience. Romans 5 1, uh, Romans 6 17. And God be thanked that while you were the servants of sin, you have obeyed from the heart of the former doctrine, which we delivered unto you. I, I, I think there is a peace that Christians have. A peace that is very, very emphatic as far as our faith in God is concerned, as far as our obedience to His will is concerned. We need to learn to be like Paul to be content in that relationship. One of the things that we have had in the verse of scripture that we read, he says, be careful for nothing but everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving and let your request be made known unto God. And then the peace of God will dwell with us. How much time do you spend in prayer? How much time do you really deal with the idea that you have the opportunity to let your request be known to God? I think we can gain a real sense of security, peace, as a result of our prayer. The second thing that Paul emphasizes, and I think this is so important to have the right thinking. Listen to what Paul says in the eighth verse of the fourth chapter of the book of Philippians. Finally, brother, what sort of things are true? And that's something we have to do today is separate the truth from the untruth. What sort of things are honest? What sort of things are just? What sort of things are pure? What sort of things are lovely? What sort of things are of good report? If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. That's for me. I wasn't going to tell Ruth I wasn't going to say anything about this, but I want to. That's Friday, Ruth went to Cabo Huntington Hospital. I had to go with her because uh, I had to drive for her. And, uh, I was sitting there while they were doing a procedure called a colonoscopy. There was a black woman sitting up, up from me. And I don't know what was said. I think I got my head off and we started to sleep a little bit. She saw me, she started to check off. And I said something, I said, the worst thing I would do is sit here and wait and wait and wait. I said, that wears me out. And she said, we talked. Her husband was there because he has colon cancer. Had surgery. And they were doing a follow-up colonoscopy for the third year after his surgery. And she was sitting there worrying. I told her I was a preacher. She told me where she went to church. And we, I, I told Ruth, I said, after I, she found out I was a preacher, I couldn't shepherd her. 
She was a very, very sweet person. And I was able to really help her to see that no matter what happens, that she would put everything in God's hands. And that God worked it out. When I got up to leave, and I was walking out the door, I think I heard her say, I want a hug. And I didn't stop at wish her. Brethren, I, I think that we need to realize that when we get our minds on things that God wants our minds to be on, everything's going to work out to His glory. No matter what. No matter what. We need to put the helmet of salvation on as we find in Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Fifth chapter. But that help of salvation when we think of nothing but good thoughts will protect us from everything that's happening in the world. Then the third thing that we find here is in verse number nine. Right living. We have the right relationship with God, the right thinking, and then we have the last, the right living, uh, which is found in verse number nine. That is those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. Do. Now I get down in the dust. Ruth, Ruth says that there's times where he she can see the depression in me. Or she's schooled for that. And let me tell you, there's no greater joy. Then know that each step I take, I take the Lord Jesus Christ. Each step that you take, He's there with you. His Spirit dwells in your heart, and you dwell in Christ. And no matter what happens, He's there to give you the strength and the peace that passes all understanding. Continue, Acts 2, 42. Continue steadfast in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship in the breaking of bread and in prayers. 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17. Paul gives instructions. He says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God. It is proper for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction of righteousness, that the man of God may be lead to a perfect third of the first step of all the works. Right living. Your life can be a blessing to somebody that you don't even know. Your life can be a blessing for God. I think Christians, especially in this day and age, ought to give themselves over completely to God. Know that God is in control. I think he could stop what's going on in the world by just a blink of his eye. And I think we ought to rest firmly upon God and let him give us the peace that passes all understanding. We're going to be singing our song of invitation. One verse of almost persuaded. Is anyone here that needs to come to Christ to make a decision, whatever it may be, we must be done.